I've just walked about 10 minutes on from where I parked the car here in Podgorica. I've made it to the capital and this is the Cathedral of the Resurrection of Christ. It's a Serb Orthodox Cathedral and it was built in 1993. It took 10 years to build so finished in 2003. So if it looks pretty new, it's because it is. So just across the road from the church, there's a very communist looking block of flats. This city was named Titograd when it first got given the title of capital because Tito was the ruler of the Yugoslavia. So I'm now walking down towards the area known as Newtown. So after the last couple of days where it's been fairly cool up in the mountains at five, five and a half thousand feet, I'm back down near a sea level now and it is much warmer. It's like a desert air down here. Uh, there's a really warm breeze at the moment. It's uh, definitely t-shirt weather and it's what, 6th of October? It's all good. Little stray dog. He wasn't stray, he was with that guy. So right in the centre of the city is the River Maraca. It's pretty low at the moment because it's summer, but in the rainy season, it can get much higher than it is now. And just coming into shot now is the Millennium Suspension Bridge. Again, it's quite a new addition to the city. It was opened to the public on the 13th of July, 2005 and that just happens to be Montenegro's National Day. So the bridge is 173 meters long and the pylons soar up to 57 meters high. They're attached apparently with counterweights creating quite an imposing image. It's also uh, an image that I saw quite clearly from the aeroplane coming in. I took a photo of it on the iPhone so you can see it from pretty much miles away. That's the next bridge I'm heading to. So I've crossed over the bridge and the new town is on both sides of the river. So I'm on the other side now and I'm gonna go and find the new town square, the sort of central meeting place. So this is the city center of Podgorica. It's uh, very different from a lot of places I've been on this trip. You can see it has a huge communist Yugoslav influence on the buildings that are around this central area. We have got an old town here. And I'm gonna be walking to that next, it's not far away. But for now I wanted to come and see what the actual city centre is like. As I say, if you open up a brochure of Podgorica, you're gonna see this city square. This is how I've seen it before, searching for images on the internet. Anyway, back round again. I am going now to head over to the old town. Boxes are defeating, purpose always fleeting. I poise questions to the ceiling like an answer gonna come. Truth is too revealing, life is easier concealing. All emotions to the start on your heart going numb I shouldn't be in drive more I just want to feel alive more I feel hurt all the time, boy I can't see straight I've been running on the freeway Till I get blinded by the headlights They go past me I see the last me that I ever will be and that got me asking If living this lightly Has that been the right thing? Or should I been a little bit more focused on the place That my feet needed to go? So looking back towards the Maraca River and just as we come inland a little bit, you can see something called the Ribnica Bridge. It's a very historic bridge. It was built in the 5th century by Romans. And then it was renovated later on under Ottoman rule. So I'm going to head down there, take a closer look. But to do that, I think I've got to walk along the park a little bit and through 
a monument now, I think, called the King's Gate. Tell you what, to park the car, and I parked it really centrally here in the centre of the city, it's cost 30 cents an hour. Cambridge, it isn't. London, it isn't. 30 cents, I'd say, is a bargain. Right, how do we get down here? So it turns out there is no city gate, but there is a monument to King Nicola. I've heard his name mentioned before on this trip, so he must be quite a well thought of and popular king. So these are the steps that lead down. I'm a little bit closer now to the old Roman bridge and aptly I need to cross it in order to enter the older part of the city. These Roman ruins have not been preserved very well. They're just sitting here, abandoned really. I guess there's just not enough tourists in this city to make an attraction out of it. Got to be careful as well while you're walking around. I'm just walking into the old town now and uh, from what I understand the older part of the city here was bombarded heavily during World War II and most of the buildings were either mostly destroyed or completely destroyed. There are three left though, uh, two mosques and a clock tower. So I'm gonna go and search for those. I've spotted the first mosque. There it is right there. The older part of the city was built by the Ottomans. You can see it is in pretty good repair, albeit a little grubby. It looks like this building is being held up by stilts behind it. Looks incredibly old and worn. Here's the second mosque. A few loose tiles there, but still in good repair, I'd say. And I think round here to the left is the clock tower. Or at least I hope it is. The contrast between some of these buildings, look at that really old grubby looking one. And then just a couple of properties on. A much different look. Looks really nice actually. So I think this is the centre of the old town now. Lots of people here, restaurants, bars, lots going on. And uh, a suspiciously looking very clean and new clock tower. Not convinced that that's the original, but there we have it. Someone's not happy over there. There we go, it's quarter past six. The sun sets at quarter past six. So I think it's time to head back to the car now and then Go and find my hotel at the airport. Just stopped by the new town to get some dinner en route. Thanks for joining me on this incredible road trip around the amazing Montenegro. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really does help the channel. And uh, I look forward to catching you in the next country.